you. But of course, it is holiday season now, and travelling can be a joy, but it can also be very dangerous. The roads freeze over, seas can get rough, and your plane could crash. Well, Mark Miller finds out that being prepared for the worst is the best way to stay safe. If you're flying along, beautiful day in the mountains, out over a big lake, and your engine fails, you can't get it restarted, you're going to have to ditch. Do you know what to do as a pilot or a passenger? Things on fire. There was a big bang. Went underneath the water. When a small aircraft has to ditch into the water, it goes from airspeed to zero in just a few seconds. The aircraft often flips over. And the wing hit the water and catapulted. It is a frightening experience. We just watched the plane sink. Simply knowing which way is up is virtually impossible. Almost every day somewhere in North America, this happens. An aircraft has to ditch or crashes into the water. The good news is most planes will stay afloat for several minutes, giving the passengers and crew lots of time to get out if they know what to do. Surprisingly, two-thirds of those on board will survive the initial crash, but the majority will die anyway from drowning, from failing to get out of the airplane. The danger is they won't be able to get in the raft. John Heiler is a pilot. There you go. He's also a safety expert. Okay, Franco. He believes there is a way to save more lives. You want to keep everybody involved. But passengers and pilots first need to know what to do. Again, you can imagine that if they've never ever done something like this in real life, to be faced with it uh, for the first time in a real life situation could be extremely overwhelming. So 10 of us have signed up for a lesson in survival that we hope we'll never have to use. Despite the routine of flying, well done, Rob. Most people don't think about how they're going to escape from a plane wreck. And therefore, there goes a chance for surviving the situation. Everybody did it. John Heiler warns that could be a deadly oversight. So Heiler invented the Dunker. I'll count to three and allow you some time to take a deep breath. Designed to simulate an aircraft cabin underwater. One by one, each of us will be strapped in, flipped over, and expected to survive. So the idea is to start simple. They've taken the doors off for now. They're just trying to teach us how to get out of the aircraft, or the simulated aircraft in this case. And uh, it should be pretty easy, they tell me. One, two, three. The average person under stress can hold their breath for about 30 seconds. It's enough time to get out if you follow five important steps. Well, the five steps are wait for the motion to stop. You don't want to get pushed around by the water because this orientation can set in very quickly. Identify your exit, grab a reference point somewhere in the aircraft, with the other hand, release your seatbelt, and pull yourself out. Escaping from an overturned cabin isn't as easy as it looks. Poor visibility or lack of light will leave most victims not knowing which way is up. So it's pretty disorientating right away. You come out actually on the other side of the airplane, not really sure where you are. Everything's out of focus, obviously, because you're in the water, you don't have any goggles on. You can see this would be actually very difficult in a sort of surprise situation. As each of us conquers each simulation, John cranks it up a notch, adding an obstacle. You've got to get the door open to get yourself out. After a few tries, the dunker seems almost routine. The initial rush goes away and just keep calm. Then, then, then it's fine. But that's the main thing, is just to try to realize you don't have to get out in five seconds. You can handle for a minute. So. But then, John throws in a curve. To simulate damage to the aircraft, one of the doors is jammed shut. It won't open. My primary exit doesn't work. Where's my secondary exit? Not only where's the secondary exit, but how am I going to open it when I get there? It will require some calm, quick thinking. Panic could use up valuable air, and that could mean the difference between escape and death. One to two, three seconds is enough to get your thoughts together to figure out what have I have to do. And I know I can get myself out of this. With the dunker mastered, we're forced to do it all over again, but this time with goggles designed to simulate complete darkness. So you want to make sure that you have a good mental roadmap how to get your hand on the handle. We're forced to escape completely blind, feeling our way to safety. On average, it takes about 30 seconds to escape from the aircraft. 
That's it. Once out. Well done. We're taught how to use the safety equipment. Just slide them up. The raft, the life jackets, basic stuff that most of us have never thought about before. We want them to be aware of what can happen. And if they're aware of what can happen, aware of the barriers that can preclude it, they can actually prepare themselves much better. With the water work complete, we towel off and head to the classroom. I know how to get myself out of this. Everyone here has survived the dunker. Congratulations, Rob. We're all certified in crash survival. But this is about more than just a piece of paper. This is about peace of mind, the kind you get from knowing you now know how to live through a plane crash. tells you that your door won't open or it's going to be dark. All I know is take your stilettos off before you go down the slide. <laughs> That's right. Well, uh, you know, and apparently there are little details that I, I think we may have gone over quickly in that. One of them being it's a really bad thing if you've just entered the water to take your seatbelt off right away because then the water flooding into the cabin can push you to the back of the cabin yeah. and you're far away from the door. Now, wouldn't everybody think, I got to get out of this seat belt first? Yeah, it's really about being prepared, isn't it, Jay? Uh, yeah. Waiting till the water settles, then undoing your seat belt, and of course, before the crash happens, knowing exactly where your exits are. And, uh, and again, if one is damaged, knowing where a secondary exit See, is as well. I think the value of doing what Mark Miller was doing along with those other people is you just make it automatic, because yeah. then even if you're in a sheer state of panic, maybe some of that automatic process will take over and get you through. And apparently people who have taken the course there and then have had the misfortune to crash in water have said that the dunker is very realistic. Mm -hmm.